Hey everyone, so this is the uh, power of the EHR assignment um, overview. So I have clicked on the link um, from Canvas to be taken to the power of the EHR assignment. I'm going to click on a uh, new session, which will bring up the chart of Gwen Cummings, our patient here. And so that's the chart that we're going to be working with. So I'm actually going to go out of here, click on this one more time, and show you this. Um, so on the before you launch the EHR, um, you download the activity. And this is actually where you would type all of the um, all of the answers to the uh, questions that you're gonna that we're gonna look over. So I'll show you just a second. Hold on. And that's right below this little recording box. So let me get that out of the way. There we go. Uh, hold on just a second. Okay, so I got um, Gwen's uh, the activity for this uh, exercise up here in a Word document. And so this is the directions. These are the directions for this particular homework assignment within the EHR Go. And so it tells you what the instructions are. Um, and you're going to basically work in the chart. You don't actually do anything in the chart here. You're going to review the chart of Gwen Cummins to complete this activity. Um, and so we click on the link, launch the EHR, which I have open in another window. Um, and then we refer to the chart um, and any of those suggested resources to complete the activity. So the suggested resources are these three things here. Uh, rethinking, drinking, and alcohol in your health. Uh, the CWA guidelines and then withdraw treatment and management. So you can also download all of those things and have those things available to you also when you are going through and completing this exercise. So you would um, type your answers in here. There's a glossary here with some uh, definable terms um, for adverse event, clinical quality measures, coded data, and so on at the top and then we begin the activity so you would type your name in here and um, just answer the questions then so you read through this material it tells you about why EHRs are important how they unlock uh, powerful data they hold powerful data and then um, this process called data mining and how extracting that data is uh, used for meaningful research and we can use the extracted data in that research to improve individual patient care um, and you know best practices and healthcare delivery and so we go on and uh, read further about coded and non-coded data fields um, <clears throat> and so coded are things with drop down menus usually non-coded are things that are free form that you can type into most often times and so um, gives you some more examples here and uh, also teaches you you should be reading through all this I'm skimming through this to make this video short um, but some uh, literature here about structured and unstructured data fields um, where uh, structured are blank boxes uh, where it's free text for you to enter a value in a description um, and uh, then there's qualifiers down here in this picture um, which would be a structured data field because excuse me the non-structured are the free text boxes and again the structured are um, the drop-down boxes so uh, because there's already populated information in those so um, you keep going down there's a lot more information in those paragraphs there to read and then we keep scrolling on down here you read through all of this information about how these things improve the interdisciplinary use with the EHR and then we get down to the bottom for the questions 
So, after you read through all of that stuff, we get to the questions, and that's when you go into Gwen's chart, and you use Gwen's chart to answer these questions. So, we want to know what the clinical alerts are for Gwen. So, I'm going to minimize this, minimize her chart, so that I can pull them both up together and answer the two. Oh, I lost her. There she is. Hold on. Okay, I clicked out of this one and over into this one. So, now I have Gwen's... Gwen's chart open, and so the first question over here is, what are the clinical alerts for Gwen? And so, um, from her panel over here, we want to go click on alerts, and so she, we can tell right here, she has aspiration precautions, and um, no known drug allergies, she has fall risk, and she has a full code alert. So, we would type all those things in here aspiration precautions oh this was the girl that was in the car accident she was drunk driving I think she has no known drug allergies um, fall risk and full code and then um, what medication allergies does drug does Gwen have um, well, here, it's none. It's just no known allergies to drugs. But if you want to be sure, we can double check down here. Uh, nothing there. Overview, just to make sure. Alerts, none. It's just, I mean, it's the same thing here as it was in the other uh, alert tab here. But, uh, I'll type over here. None. And uh, Dr. West has written orders in Gwen's chart. Identify two healthcare professionals who can view her record because there are orders requesting they be involved in Gwen's care. Okay, so I go over here and I click on orders. And looking at her orders, Dr. West has ordered all of these things. And from looking at this, um, a nurse is going to be involved because she's going to be the one or an MA is going to be involved because she's going to be the one giving the meds. Uh, dietetics will be involved because they will be administering the diet portion. <sighs> lab. Lab will be involved because they'll be doing the labs, the blood draws, and running the labs. Psych will be involved because the psych consult was ordered. So you could list any of those things. So. Um, any of those pharmacy um, for the meds also would be involved. So pharmacy, a case manager um, here. There's a case manager consult was listed for counseling while uh, she's hospitalized for alcohol and drug rehab and discharge planning. So any of those things would be uh, listed for uh, any other healthcare professionals who would be able to view her record because. Dr. West has put in orders requesting that they be involved in her care. Uh, Gwen had three sets of vital signs documented in her chart. What was the trend of her temperature from the time that she arrived in the emergency room until 12 hours later? So we're going to go click on her vitals. We're going to look at her temperature. All right, so here's where she arrived at 12.01, 2200 is 10 p.m. So looking at this, 2200 10 p.m. Yeah. So looking at this, uh, it looks like her temperature was steadily increasing slightly from the time of arrival to her night uh, recording as was her pulse. Her respirations were at 20 when she, uh, upon arrival, they dipped down to 16 and then were up again to 20. Her blood pressure, same thing, was a little elevated here. Uh, normal, if a little low, and then back up to a little high for systolic. For it says Gwen has an order for a CWA scoring. What is the CWA scoring and why is it used? 
So we'll go back over here to her orders. Um, orders. And consult. Oh, no, no, sorry. CWA scoring. So they're going to complete the CWA score every hour until the score is um, less than 8, and then reassess the CWA score every 4 hours as needed based on the patient's condition. So, and then there's medication order based on the scoring. So if you don't know what the CWA score is, then that is where you would go into these um, uh, resources and look at the CWA guidelines. And here is what CWA is. It is the Institute, uh, the Clinical Institute Withdrawal Assessment of Alcohol Scale. And so it is basically the al alcohol detox scale. And it's how they um, measure, it's a clinical measurement tool for alcohol detox monitoring and um, alcohol withdrawal. And so since she was involved in a motor vehicle accident with uh, you know, alcohol intoxication. Um, it is presumed that she is uh, going to be detoxing from uh, alcoholism, and that they're going to try to get her in a treatment pro program. And uh, they'll, they'll, they will be following the CWA uh, alcohol detoxification protocol. And so, this is where you would find the information to answer. Uh, question number five about what the CWA scoring is, why it's used, and uh, the answers uh, that are relevant to question five would be found in here in this article. Okay, so back to the chart and the questions. Um, the nurse uh, question six also deals with CWA scoring, so you know where to find that now. It's also in that article. Um, so for number seven, you're a member of the healthcare team coming to work for the day. Uh, the day after Gwen has been admitted, you've been assigned to care for her. She asks why a case manager has to talk to her. Where would you go to find that information in Gwen's chart, and what does her chart say? So you would look for her orders, and then you would go down to case management consult. And then um, the order states that uh, the case management was ordered as counseling while hospitalized uh, for alcohol and drug rehab and then discharge planning. So uh, essentially she has been ordered a case management consult so that um, they can align her with services for alcohol and drug rehab and then also provide her with um, planning so that she can be successful in alcohol and drug rehab upon discharge. Um, and then lastly, number eight is uh, a little bit of a longer one, and it says um, consider this example of how EHRs can improve the quality of patient care, um, and that would require you to read this um, um, other article over here in just a second I'll show you. Um, but it says, improving patient safety and outcomes, a healthcare facility wishes to find out if a new, more expensive diabetes medication is lowering the weight in hemoglobin A1C lab values for patients more than the traditional medication, medication A. What coded or structured data is necessary to look for in the EHR to answer this question? So um, this one is a little bit more involved, and you... I believe can find some of the answers um, perhaps actually no nope, they're not in that so let me help walk you through this they what you would need to do first is the first set of, da of data that you would look for is uh, a diagnosis so you would look in the problem list and see if they have a diagnosis of um, diabetes. And so if the patient has a diabetes, a diagnosis of diabetes, then you would be able to then determine what medications they're on. So if they have a uh, diagnosis of diabetes, you would then go to their med list and determine if they are on the medication A or the medication B. 
you would then look and see um, what the date uh, of an active order for medication B would be. So remember, we're trying to figure out if this new expensive medication is the result of, uh, or is responsible for these patients losing weight and um, uh, lowering their hemoglobin A1C levels. So we would look for a diagnosis of diabetes, then look to see who is taking this uh, medication B by looking in their med list here. And then we would look to see when they started taking the expensive medication. And then we would go up into their vitals and look at their uh, hemoglobin A1C values and their labs, that would be down here. But in their vitals, we would look at their weights and see what their weights were prior to them beginning the uh, expensive diabetes medication and then after beginning the expensive diabetes medication. And then we would go down to their labs and look at the hemoglobin A1C. She doesn't have any, but we would look at the hemoglobin A1C levels prior to beginning the expensive diabetes medication and then also after being on the expensive diabetes medication. And so you would do the same thing for all of the patients who also took the traditional less expensive medication. You would do the same thing. You would look for a diagnosis of diabetes in the problem list and then you would um, look for what medication they were on and then you would look for when they started that medication and then you would look at their weight and their hemoglobin A1C both before and after they started the less expensive medication. And so that is essentially the answer to question eight. Um, okay, um, so you would type all of those out in here and once you are done, you save this. Now, if you are having trouble saving and uploading these as Word documents, you can um, save them as Adobe PDFs. I have Adobe um, software, so I don't, uh, like I subscribe to the suite. So if you don't do it, uh, if you don't and don't have the option to save it directly here, what you can do is save it um, as a Word document and then go back in and save it as a PDF after you've saved it as a Word document. So um, uh, people have been much more successful uploading them as PDF files than they have uh, to Canvas than they have as Word documents lately, so for whatever reason. All right, uh, I think that's it for the power of uh, the EHR.